Hello, people of God. Hello, hello, hello. I am going to try with all the clarity and simplicity the Holy Ghost will impart to me to really unpack and give you a word that I know is going to bring about tangible deliverance for you because it has done that for me. Like it has done that for me. I'm going to need about 20, 25 minutes, but I really want you to be patient with me as I really attempt to unpack what the Lord is showing me, especially now, especially now in the midst on the cusp of the celebration of Pentecost, right? The celebration of the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. So I've said this before. I don't, you know, if this is your first time listening to me or if this is your millionth time, right, that I'm in Atlanta. And today is May 30th, 2020. And so if you have any connection to the news or social media, you know what's going on in Atlanta, right? And it is what's going on in pockets of the U.S. because of what what started in Minneapolis, right? So you know that. So... Yesterday, I released the word around wrong agreement, right? I released the word around agreement. And so even now, oh my gosh, y'all, even now the the Holy Ghost is showing me so much revelation. Like, like the Holy Ghost showed it to me personally, and then he showed it to me corporately in relation to what is going on in this city, right? And so I'm going to try to take take all of those examples along with the word and just really show you what the Holy Ghost is saying, because again, because again, this word that I am releasing is a word to bring about deliverance. You know, I have said in previous videos that the Holy Ghost um, has me in the New Testament, right? But as the Holy Ghost was unpacking this word, he took me to Exodus 14, which is the Red Sea moment. And the Holy Ghost said to me, this is a Red Sea kind of day. And so as I was saying that, and I was, I was typing it, I could hear the Holy Ghost said, no, red, C, S, E, E. Like, like you're about to, you're about to see, right? You're about to see. And for us as New Testament believers, right? The, the Holy Ghost was saying to me, this is, this is what was imparted in Revelations 12 and 11. When we get to see the triumph through the blood of the lamb, when Jesus said, when, when, when the words are spoken in Revelation 12, that we triumph through the blood of the lamb, that is, that is right now what we see in accordance to Exodus 14 and 13. So this is a red sea. This word is going to bring about you seeing some deliverance, right? Thank you, Jesus. So you know, this is what this is what is so interesting, right? Because there are so many voices, there, there's so much going on, right? But this is what I want to tell you that the Holy Ghost imparted to me. So right now, in my city, right, in this city, there is um, a lot of rioting and protesting that's going on, right? And here's what is so crucial that I need you to see from a spiritual point of view. I really need, I really don't want you to get it in your flesh. I really don't want you to, to, cause, and I'm going to try not to name names because I don't want you guys to see this in the natural, but here's what happened. Here's what happened, right? So we have had political and entertainment voices that, that for a while, not just because of what just happened recently, but for a while have been saying, you know, we got to take care of us, right? It's us against them. And that, that comes in occupation, civilians against cops, black against white, right? Like we've had voices that have said, we got to do what we got to do to make sure our voice is heard and that things get done. Like we have been, we have been inciting this, this atmosphere of revolution, right? We have. And so now that, that thing, that spirit, right, of, of revolution has manifested, right? And it has taken, it has, it has shown itself. And now, right, that's what we see, right? We see an incited group of people, right, that have agreed with that spirit and that atmosphere of revolution. And it doesn't look as it never does, right, as, as clean and as, packaged and as compartmentalized as we've wanted it to look right it's one thing through social media to to share a video and to get people in their feelings and now when those feelings manifest and people out here going crazy and doing crazy stuff and having no sense of 
the reality of what they're destroying. Now, those same voices that have all this time been saying, yeah, 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 do it, are now trying to, to pull the people back. Well, you can't pull the people back when that spirit that has had all this agreement is now manifested and people are going crazy. Now, you, you've given utterance to a spirit that has taken over. And I really want you to see what God is saying. So now you want to calm people down. Now you want to have news conferences where you want to tell the people, no, 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 no. So when I say by any means necessary, I really meant this. No, 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 no. And this, this, this now I'm going to bring it home, right? Because I don't want you guys to get stuck here. And we, we through wrong agreement, we've done the same thing, right? We, when I say the word agreement, sometimes we think of agreement in such a conscious way, like in such a deliberate way, in such a an intentional way, right? And that is not necessary necessarily the case. That is not necessarily the case. I pointed out that in um, in the Old Testament, when God came to Abram and said, you know, when he gave Abram the promise that I will make your name great and I will make you a great nation, the Bible says Abraham moved. Abraham went, right? That's agreement. Abraham did not vocalize, you know, I, I agree with you, Lord, but he did agree with God because he left. He left where he was and was on his way to Canaan, right? You understand what I'm saying? Even when in the New Testament, because that's where God has me, when 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 the Bible says that the voice of the Lord comes from, from heaven, right? And says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, right? And, and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove, right? Jesus didn't say, I receive, right? I, 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 he didn't say that. But yet, right after that, right after that same passage of scripture, the Bible says the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness where he went to be tempted by the devil. There's agreement. There's, I, I'm going on my assignment. And let me, let me pause to say that, that one thing that God said to me is, listen, the process never looks like me. It never looks like me, right? That's why we get so confused and we're so attached to warfare, right? And I've said this before. If you would have asked Joseph if what he was going through was an attack, he would have said yes. As a matter of fact, when he's in prison, right, and he gives the dream to the cupbearer, he says to the cupbearer, tell Pharaoh, I think it was the cupbearer or the baker. It, it, was, it was the cupbearer, I think. He says, tell Pharaoh tell Pharaoh about me because I shouldn't be here. I, I, I'm here and I shouldn't. So he's still not coming to grips with the fact that he doesn't know, right? So, you know, I said all that to say that that's what God was saying to me. God said to me just really quickly, I want to, the process never looks like me. So what we're going through that we just keep being in agreement is warfare, right? We never see God in it. We never see God in it, right? So this is so good. So the Holy Ghost started to talk to me. So he, he showed me that whole thing corporately with, with my city and agreement, right? Wrong agreement. And then he talked about me. He talked about me, right? And yesterday I had two situations where some wrong agreement had tried, like manifested right in front of me. Both of both of these ways in such innocent ways, and I missed it. Like I, oh God, y'all, I completely missed it. Like I didn't own it, but I didn't, I didn't see what it was, and it was so beautiful that it was with the two people that God is doing the most work in in my life in terms of relationship. Like one was with my kid, and one was with my Adam, right? Who's still sleeping, by the way, <laughs> and. It was, it was, it was labels, right? It was labels that I at one time agreed with, right? And even last night when I was texting and I don't have a lot of contact with him because God does not allow it. So it was so funny because when I released that word, I knew that so much of that was, was for him and I was praying about it. And so when he messaged me, he... He said something and he said, and I, again, I missed it. I mean, I was, first of all, I was completely asleep when I got the text and I was responding in my sleep, being very sleepy. And it's so funny because when, I, when, when I was going back to sleep, the Holy Ghost woke me up to go back to look at my response. So he said a word in relation to me, right? And he said the word agree. He said, I bet you won't agree that you're this way, right? And so, oh, this is so good. 
So, because it's it's like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's the fourth watch. And I was so sleepy, you guys. But when I looked at the message, I said in a text message, no, I will never, never, ever, 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 ever agree with it. Like, I said it that many and I'm sleep. Like, I'm literally, like, sleep. And so, when God started to wake me up this morning... Um, and I started to just like, you know, get on social media and see all this stuff going on. And God just started revealing all this stuff to me. And God just started unpacking and talking to me and saying, you know, this is a day of deliverance. And God started to talk to me about coming out that wrong agreement. Right. Let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you. Right. I know that it won't feel like it. I know that it won't look like it because when the children of Israel were at the Red Sea, right, it didn't look like this was about to be a day of deliverance. It didn't look like they were about to come out of all the wrong agreement they had ever been in for 400 years. It didn't look like right after God said, this is my son in whom I, I, who I love and am well pleased. And Jesus gets ushered right into the, to the wilderness. It, okay. So, so where's the love at now? It didn't look like it, but guess what? Jesus, Jesus knew where he was going to end up. He 100% like he did not agree with the wilderness. He agreed with, with sitting at the right hand of the father. That's so, so I know this is just a process. And because he knew that his wilderness, his wilderness really was for 40 days. Unlike the children of Israel who was 40 years. Oh my, isn't that good? Because he knew, listen, I don't agree with this moment. I agree with the fact that I'm going to be sitting at the right hand of the father. Like that's where I agree with. And so as God started to talk to me about coming out of that agreement, right. And understanding the process and understanding, even as we, we, we come out of wrong agreement with that, what that looks like, right. The Lord also parked me. And I really pray that this word is blessing you. The Lord also parked me at Matthew 13 and 21 that says trouble and persecution will come because of the word. This is the passage of scripture that talks about the harvest, right? And this is so good because last night, right? So yesterday, yesterday, God gave me that word about, uh, about agreement. And now here, here is two times that situations with my Adam and with my kid that that old wrong agreement presents itself to me. And I'm not even conscious of it because like Jesus, I know my truth. So it doesn't, I don't even see it. Like I don't even see it, right? Like I don't see the labels. I don't see the, 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 the attempt to get me to agree with it, right? I don't even see it. But this is what I want to say about Matthew 13 and 21 that we miss. And this is where we slip into warfare mode because that scripture, which is about the harvest, again, says that trouble and persecution will come because of the word. It'll come. Be so it is like, oh, OK, that person has a word. So now trouble and persecution have to come. Right. But for us, when trouble and persecution comes because we got a word. Right. We think we've done something wrong. We slip into warfare mode. No, let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said that, guess what? They fall away when the trouble and the persecution comes because they have no roots. Now, guess what? Because this scripture is, is the parable of the sower, what, what do you know that can yield a harvest that has no roots? So guess what? When the trouble and the persecution comes, like God said to me last night, the Holy Ghost said, you should be so happy that, that those two instances came so immediately to solidify the fact that you're rooted in, in the right agreement. Oh my God. Right. And I didn't even, I didn't even catch that I was deliberately owning it. I just was, I just knew my truth. I, I just knew what I now agree with. Right. So the Holy Ghost said, when you get a word, when you get a word and trouble and persecution comes immediately to try to snatch that, you need to be happy, right? And you need to say, oh, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm rooted in my truth. I'm rooted in the new agreement. And so guess what? I'm glad you're here because all you're going to do is solidify my truth. That's all. You're going to solidify the fact that I am rooted. And because that trouble and persecution solidifies the fact that you're rooted, guess what happens when you're rooted? Guess what happens when, 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 the, when you are rooted and that seed cannot be, can, cannot be yanked out? Harvest. 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 You hear me? Harvest. Let me tell you what, what, what the Holy Ghost also showed me that I hope makes sense, right? 
because I told you that God has me on this whole thing with words and language, right? So a synonym for the word root is cause, K-A-U-S-E. And King Solomon, yeah, I'm hopping to the Old Testament again, says, can there be a curse without a cause, right? Listen, there's, we have given, we have given validation to wrong agreements. We've said it's because of this, <laughs> It's because of this, right? It's because this is in my bloodline. This is because I've always been this way. This is because I feel this way. So I must be in warfare because I feel sad. I must not be healed because I feel pain. So that curse of that thing is like, oh, we can stay here because they still agree with me. Oh, man, that's going to go right over somebody's head. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, she still agrees with it. He still agrees with it. And so you say, because I feel this way, because it looks that way, it's because of that you agree with it. It stays. It stays. You just said it. You you said it. You said, I don't feel it. It don't look like it. You think Jesus being led into the wilderness for 40 days says, oh yeah, I can really see the, the fact that you love me. This makes perfect sense. Sure. No, he said it's because I'm going to sit at the right hand of the father that I could push right on through this 40 days of wilderness. I see exactly what this is. You understand what I'm saying? The curse can't stay when we realize that there's no more because I am redeemed, so there's no more because, right? <laughs> a synonym for the word root is cause. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. We so innocently and deceptively, be, we, we become attached to wrong agreements. Let me tell you, right? Let me tell you. And even yesterday, right? Even yesterday, a lot of time, I already know, and I'm really going to try to wrap this up, right? I already know that where I'm leading people, you know, the enemy feels some type of way. I can tell by the comments, which I, I, I move as quickly as I can find them because I do want this to be a safe place for you guys. I can't do anything when somebody doesn't like it, but I understand that the enemy is going to always, you know, send the haters, right? He's always going to send somebody, but I cannot, I cannot validate that agreement, right? Because I know I have to be thankful for the people that catch it, the people that are fed, the people that understand this is a safe, I, I can't be worried about that. You understand what I'm saying? So I said all that because that is how I used to, I used to be focused on the wrong agreement, right? I used to be focused on what it looks like and what it feels like and, and why can't everybody like me and, and you know what I'm saying? Like if it doesn't look like how I need it to look, something must be wrong, right? And again, according to Matthew, you need to, the trouble and the persecution is going to come be, because of the word. Mm, Jesus, hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you, this is a time of deliverance. This is a time for the manifestation of all of that wrong agreement to fall off of you. All of the wrong. Listen, when, when somebody, when, even, even when you think about colds, right? Like we like to say, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to catch a cold. Right. Or somebody says, what happened? Oh, you know, I caught your cold or you, you understand how, how subliminal, and I hate to use that word, how deceptive, that's a better word. Thank you, Jesus. The enemy has been in getting us to really come into agreement. And that agreement has been so deep rooted, so deep rooted, so deep rooted, right? And, and we didn't even realize it. We didn't even realize what we had come into agreement with. We didn't even realize through our bloodline, through the environment, through, through, through just our culture, through our race, through everything that we had come into agreement with this thing. And now it has, it has manifested a harvest. And now we're trying to get rid of the harvest and we haven't gotten rid of the roots. We haven't gotten rid of the because. We haven't. So we, so we keep trying to chop the tree down and then the tree grows up again. So we chop another tree and the tree goes down. Oh, I'm going to get rid of this, this person and I'm going to get somebody new. And, and you got the same spirit packaged differently. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Oh, it y'all y'all don't see the root of this thing. So I'm thinking, you know, it's it's I'm depressed. I'm I'm oppressed. 
I'm negative, I'm hurt, and the whole time I have come into agreement with a strong spirit of misery because cause my mama miserable or because my daddy miserable. Oh, y'all not, are y'all hearing me? But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, today is a Red Sea kind of day. Today, the Bible says we triumphed by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Listen, the blood of the lamb, the blood of the lamb can get in there. And when I tell you the blood of the lamb can absolutely redeem, listen, Jesus said, Jesus said in Galatians, right? I have redeemed you from the curse. If I'm redeemed from the curse, then there is no because. There is no because that is greater than the blood. But your mama was like that, but the blood. But your daddy was like that, but the blood. You've always been like that, but the blood. The pain is still there, but the I'm rooted in the blood. I agree with the blood. Oh, you understand? Red Sea, get it? Like, like they were, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Like, like with the children of Israel, they were going through the Red Sea. They were going through the Red Sea. So the Red Sea, the blood got them through and it destroyed their enemies. Oh my God. Mm. I'm done. I'm done. And now we have a greater covenant. Now we have a greater covenant. Because now, now, right? Now, we, okay, listen, listen. Now, now we don't just have a, a, a natural, right? We don't have a natural manly Moses. We don't, Moses was their GPS, their connection to God. Now we have, tomorrow, we celebrate our internal GPS that don't ever turn off. You ever, you ever been somewhere, right? And you're driving, you have a cell phone, you have to use data, right? And so maybe your GPS says you have 40 miles on this interstate. So you think, oh, I can turn my GPS now. I can turn it off now because I got like 40 miles. And so maybe, you know, in about 20, 30 minutes, I'll turn it back on, see how far I've gotten before I have to get off the exit. See, now we have an internal GPS system that we don't have to worry about turning on and turning off. And as we navigate through this new, mm, th that internal GPS is like, ooh, 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 listen, it, it don't never turn off. It, don't, it keeps us right where we need to go, right? That's what I agree with. I don't agree. Listen, this ain't on me. This, this ain't on you. This is tomorrow we celebrate our internal GPS. Jesus says you have a helper that's coming and he'll never leave. Right? The Bible says greater is he who is in me. The devil can't slip past my GPS system. No, my GPS system said, oh, look at the root of that thing. That's, that's, that's why she can't. That's why marriage ain't coming for her. Look at that thing right there. Come on. Come on. And then the GPS system says, we're going to make a detour. You know, go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of blood right here. And, and that thing's gone. That thing's gone. The GPS system said, oh, we're going to get some word on it. That thing gone. Okay. Who Jesus. I pray. I, I'm done because I'm feeling myself get emotional, right? But I just pray that the that the revelation and the impartation that God is just giving us, right? That it brings about deliverance, that it brings about deliverance. I pray that through these words that you really hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. I pray in the name of Jesus that all of the access, all of the authority, and most of all, the attack of all of those causes that the redeeming blood of Jesus just destroys it right now. I'm talking about utterly destroys it right now for each and every person that's listening.